My name is Renee Blankra, and my maiden name is Renee Meller. My mother's name was Leonora, my father was Israel. In 1939, I was born in Poland, Shanu, and the war broke out. The Russians came and they signed a non-aggression pact. That was in 1939 and I was four years old only. So the Russians signed a non-aggression pact with Hitler, but of course they broke after that. And what happened is the Russian wanted us to take a Russian citizenship. My parents didn't want, so they sent us to Siberia. Siberia was a long trip by train and it was packed. We came to Siberia and they put us with other people in a communal barrack, which was a housing made of wood and we lived there in a very bad condition. The snow was very high. I couldn't go out for days and weeks till the sun came out. My father had to cut trees for the Russians and he had to walk for uh, miles for a glass of milk for me. So it was a hard time, but also we survive on blueberries because in the forest is blueberries and mushrooms and we somehow survived. We stayed there for a year or so, and they took us to Uzbekistan, Fergana. Fergana, it was a small town, but what was wonderful, we had one room in a Russian area with Uzbek, and they were very nice to us. And uh, we stayed there, like I said, it wasn't luxury, but still it was better than in Siberia. So uh, over there, my father retouched from negative, retouching, he was a photographer. So he took out from the Russian, uh, from, no, not Russian, in, a Polish photographer gave him negatives to retouch. So he made a living like that, helped us. My mother took in from uh, people that she knew from Odessa uh, beautiful dresses and uh, clothing, other clothing, etc., to sell on a bazaar to make a living. We somehow lived there for uh, the end, up to the end of the war. It wasn't too bad because after what we had, what happened to our six million, ours wasn't so bad. And especially, I was lucky because my parents took good care of me. After the war, they let us out and we went back to Poland. In Poland, uh, my father had two nephews, Israel and Shalom. They were survivors from Russia as well. They were engineers, so Russian people loved them. So there they got, they went and were in charge of like a kibbutz type, but it was on one floor in a big beautiful building we had a whole floor they cooked for us and we had a room there and it was not too bad we, we stayed there with them for a while till uh, my uncle David Vakshal from Trinidad sent us uh, papers also from uh, together with my cousins that live in Paris, uh, Joseph Paul Tring, they sent us papers to come to Paris, France, and that was great. We had a great time there. I, uh, my father also couldn't make a living because he was uh, not a citizen of France, so he went, he used to sell watches, cameras to make a living. After the war, coming from Russia on a train, we was, I was so happy that cousins of mine, that, that is my mother's sister's children and her husband were meeting us at the station. But somehow they were there, but our train was packed with people and they didn't let them in. And we were very lucky because they didn't meet us on the train, but they met us in Poland later. They stayed a few months before we left to France, and then they uh, also uh, got together with us 
in Paris, France, we connected. So it was great for me to have at, le at last some relatives. I have to elaborate on many things because so many things happen and how uh, through all those years uh, different people came into my life and they in and out come and go but we enjoyed our relatives very much. Now in Paris I went to a school, Yabne, on, in Claude Bernard and I walked there. That was great. And Paris, as you know, everybody loves Paris, like the song goes. So me and my mom had a good time. My father was working, it wasn't easy, but I have a lo loving parents. And uh, of course my aunt lived in Paris and it, we had a good time. And uh, what happened later on, my father decided to come to United States because he had a brother, Harry, his wife Fanny, and two daughters, Janet and Beverly. So we came to Newark, New Jersey. They sent us papers. They had to guarantee because we were newcomers. And we stayed in Newark for a little while with them. Then we got an apartment. And uh, I went to school here too. And uh, life was much better, of course, in America. It's a wonderful country. We had a good life here. Of course, my father too couldn't get work because he was like well over 50. So for many years I worked and I supported them. It was my pleasure, but we had a beautiful, wonderful life together. Uh, why I am, uh, I know in general, everybody has the same good life, bad life, uh, sad life, gay life. But mine was so, since childhood, I was taken together with my parents. We were like gypsy. Here and there, we didn't have a say. So that's why I decided in my old age to paint a lotus flower and put all my grandchildren and my children a photo of them in the middle of the lotus flower. It's to show how precious life is and how, you know, we go through changes. You're a baby, you, you're a child, you're a teenager, you're a human being. Respect for life. And if I can go through and have a symbolic way of putting all this in my way of thinking that life is precious, you have to have respect for life, for how precious life is. That's what I want to bring up. And this is what symbolizes to me the lotus flower that I paint in a canvas oil. First I painted my grandchildren, which are Todd, Rebecca, uh, in Connecticut. And then uh, in Calabasas, I painted uh, Cara and Natalie. And then I went and I painted my children, which were Eva and Lisa, too, as babies. It just symbolizes to me what, how precious life is and how we have to respect one another. And where are we going if we don't have that? We have to respect, and like the saying is, you love your neighbor like yourself and don't do unto others what you wouldn't want others do to you. Those are real words that if we follow, the world would be better. We won't kill each other because where are we going? Quo vadis? That's my message to everybody. Take a look and see what is going to be our future if we don't take charge and find peace in this world.